wherever the big news story is happening, we're geared up to break it. TVC News, first with breaking news. Well, good morning and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yori Falani. Um, we've been doing security for, you know, quite a while. I indeed, we probably will touch on it again today, but another aspect of security that we're going to be looking at um, is cyber uh, security. Um, this is important and we, we have a policy, we have a cyber security policy. This was sort of revamped and uh, was launched by the president um, two uh, days or so ago. Um, now, the existing cyber security policy, you know, it's 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 coming from 2014 and so it, this is like what the president was um launching as i've just been told by our guest this morning is actually something like uh, a 2.0 so to speak as far as com computed computer dumb goes my guest this morning is favor femi oyewale she is the general uh ciso is a chief general chief yeah. information security officer at Access Bank, and um, we're delighted to have you. Thank you very much for making time for us. Thank you, good morning. Now, now, clearly, introducing you that way, you're from the private sector. Now, what the president was launching was um, a policy, national strategy, not so much a policy, a national strategy on cyber security. Is this something that brings together both private sector experts and government experts uh, indeed uh, is um, that's one of the pillars of in which this uh, cyber security policy and strategy is actually uh, national cyber security policy and strategy mm -hmm. 2021 mm -hmm. uh, the first version was 2012 14 and um, it's actually su supposed to be a five uh, year circle a life cycle of five years and of course uh, we will have been wondering why do we have to even revamp? There was a need for the revamp because, you know, for at every point in time, um, issues of technology, cybersecurity, it keeps evolving. Mm -hmm. The threats we face, either as individual or as a country, four or five years ago, is quite different from the threats that we are all exposed to at this point in time. So, and of course, to harness the opportunity that internet and social media has brought to to every for to, uh, to into everyone mm -hmm. and into the country as a whole, mm -hmm. we need to harness, take advantage of that opportunity, and also you know bring in and you know, cyber security things on a national level. It's not something that the government can just say they are going to handle alone, and that was the reason why uh, it was there's going to be more of uh, a collaboration. Even the reviews uh, was done with the, with that in uh, with that mindset by bringing on board private uh, uh, stakeholders uh, every, from almost every sector, academia, mm -hmm. you know, people from the university, people from the uh, various agency, and also uh, from the industry. You know, captains of industry were brought in together to review what we have right now as the, uh, the NCPS 2021 version. Okay, okay. because I'm actually, thank you, you've managed to answer two questions in one, because I was going to ask you, what was the need, why was there a need uh, to review it, and you've managed to uh, touch on that. Mm. The other aspect is that um, it's, it, it's almost undoable, I understand, anywhere in the world to um, um, really bring all the resources that are necessary to bear to have, as it were, as close to watertight security as you could have. As you could have. Um, w would you like to comment on that whole matter? That, uh, because we, we, we think if you were to throw money at the problem, uh, at the issue, uh, we'd be in, in good stead. But could you explain that bit about very, very few, if any, can actually, uh, as it were, you know, just come up with enough funds to have a watertight security? Um, I, the reason why the, go the, the government is going this route is not only to depend on whatever they are going to put him in into bringing the country to this, the level we desire in terms of secure, cyber security maturity. Mm -hmm. uh, there will be need for a lot of uh, stakeholder involvement, partnership from various sectors, both from the manufacturing to the financial to the industry, you know, a lot of participation from everyone. Because when it comes to the issues of cyber security, everyone is involved. Everyone has a role to play. Everyone has that responsibility. And that is why, uh, as one of the uh, pillars of 
uh, for this uh, particular version, there's going to be a lot of awareness, you know, education, you know, and national awareness, so that everybody has an understanding of what they're expected to do. Even from the person that is just walking on the road, the person that you might think on the, uh, perhaps do not really have that identity, they will have a place to belong because it is her responsibility. Everyone, everyone mm -hmm. has a role to mm -hmm. play mm -hmm. when it comes to, you know, maturing our uh, cyber security as a country. You know, I was going to say that, as, and you yourself said it, that as in other area fields of endeavor, uh, everybody has a part to play in, in this quest for our security. We hear that often in terms of the more regular security that we talk about, security to life and property. Uh, everybody has a role to play. Now, what you've just said, you, you just said that, well, in, in this particular iteration, um, Information is going to be key. Everybody has to be informed. Everybody has to know what. Now, how much of a challenge is that going to be as it relates to cybersecurity? And I'm, I'm, I'm talking about cybersecurity in connection with sort of computer, cloud uh, uh, security. Uh, it is thought that by and large, we in our country and perhaps in Africa are quote unquote functionally illiterate about these matters. Would you like to comment on that? Um, well, if I have to go back to the, my in, initial statement, uh, which is um, a lot of awareness we let people understand. Then when it comes to you know, getting ourselves to be where we desire to be, as part of the key pillars of the Nigeria cybersecurity policy and strategy is the um, is protection of the critical infrastructure of the country. Okay. And for instance, even I would also consider even the media as a critical infrastructure in a way, because uh, uh, that is more or less like the face of the country in terms of news and uh, you know bringing to bear what is happening within the country. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have a lot of critical infrastructure, which even from the policy statement uh, that has been identified as certain sectors like that, because this is going to touch different sectors within the country, is also going to have a lot of things to do. But if there's one thing that we also need to take from here, for us, for this, uh, the, one of the key things that we were, were able to do from this review was to ensure that the, there is a key thing that, ha that has to be established. One, that is a Na, the National Cyber Security Coordination Center, which is going to stand as the umbrella where, uh, at which every other initiative that we have within the policy and the strategy will be implemented. Cyber Security Coordination Center. It's NCCC. We call it NCCC. It, it, we call it NCCC, and uh, this, is, uh, um, this is National Cyber Security Coordination Center. Mm -hmm. It's going to serve as the umbrella. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it will be established, mm -hmm. and all, every, I mean, all other initiatives that will be achieved uh, for cyber security in Nigeria uh, will be on that on okay. that on, uh, uh, under uh, that body. Okay. Now another thing is um, we have uh, there's going to we're, going, you know, we're also going to leverage on international cooperation because when it comes to cyber security, you know we are all in a borderless environment mm. whereby uh, and in order for you to leverage on what uh, for peacekeeping for you know being able to you know cop crimes and also be able to investigate and do what have you and be able to tra track things in a, in a faster you know, um, way like that, you also need to leverage on international cooperation, which is already part of what has been uh, put in place in this uh, policy and strategy. Another thing which has also been put in place is the uh, fostering and enhancing the, um, the education, capacity building, the law enforcement agency, uh, it is the judiciary, uh, the legislature and the regulatory body, so that they can all work together to be able to understand how to handle cyber security Instead issues. Instead of working at cross Instead purposes of, sometimes. Uh, yes, they also to diffuse that mindset of working in silo, because what we have, we have different people doing different things as relating to cyber security. But the NCCC as a body or as a, a, under the auspice of uh, or the National Security Advisor will be the one to be able to channel and manage and coordinate all the activities among various parties within the mm. country. Mm. And be able to, so with that, we'll be able to measure you know, uh, tangibly what we've been able to achieve as a country and also the, uh, the impacts on 
individual as a nation within the country will also be able to be fed instead of people doing it you know, in a silo format? You know, I, I would say uh, probably in Nigeria and maybe in Africa, we, we came a bit late um, uh, to uh, technology and the, um, by the time cell phones became almost ubiquitous, um, that was when we joined and uh, so that it's like the, the stream was already on and then a lot of Nigerians came into contact with issues of cybersecurity that they might not even know anything about. I'm talking about the hordes and millions and millions of people whose uh, connection with, um, with um, computer um, cyber aspects of life will be no more than their WhatsApp apps, for example. Uh, that is it. But still, uh, that is an area that could be uh, a, a leak um, if, if, if things are not taken you know, carefully, maybe. I'm trying to find out. Okay, um, for inside, I mean, as part of the initiative uh, under the, the new the, the fashion that the president just launched a few days ago, is uh, taking into consideration the youth. You know, we all know that the youth is the, is the they are the future of the nation. Mm. So, and um, cybersecurity skill is scarce globally. It's not only in Nigeria. It's scarce. And of course, you also know that with all this uh, uh, skill, uh, capital flight of skill, people moving to where they consider is rosy, mm -hmm. you know. So even the few ones are just you know, on the flight to Canada, to US, and to where, wherever they think that it is more juicy. Mm -hmm. So one of the things we're going to do is to enhance and promote uh, uh, capacity building among the youth. Okay. You know, also ensure that uh, we, be, uh, we bring out or uh, create a platform whereby the giants in them can, can emerge. Mm -hmm. And also uh, promote digital skill acquisition, indigenous technology products, you know, so that we can have local content. Because it's also going to be able to, you know, enhance a lot of things. We have good, good talent, you know, in cyber security, but they need to be, they need direction. They also need to and to work out to run on a platform that will enable them to be able to do what would make them to really be able to stand at par mm. with mm. Uh, their counterparts in mm -hmm. other nations. Mm. And uh, also uh, technical education will highly be promoted and also to work with the uh, education system so that the computer cybersecurity will be embedded even as they are coming, uh, coming up, not, on, not when the already heart of uh, university and without really a bearing and they're now looking for what to do and what they have to do still have something to do with with, with cyber or with uh, technology as it were as the case may be so it's also was going to boost our uh, cyber uh, security education okay. the policy is how to develop capacity we are at, around the academia also create job opportunities in mm. the country mm. because uh, there are a lot of things that youth can do in this space when they know what they're supposed to do okay uh, thank you. And I'm going to come back to, um, especially uh, your title. Uh, your official title is Group, group CISO. Group, I'll say it in full. Group Chief Information Security Officer. Mm -hmm. And you coming from a bank, uh, most people can immediately understand the importance of that, even if they don't necessarily understand what uh, Cisco is, and we're going to come to that. But um, we're now able to um, uh, join, uh, I think in Abuja, um, your colleague and uh, He's actually the uh, chair of this particular, you know, uh, reduced committee. Yes, exactly. That was that has just been submitted to the presidency. I'm talking about um, Abdul Hakim Ajilola, uh, chair National Cybersecurity Policy and Strategy. Uh, uh, good morning, Abdul Hakim. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Um. Um. I think we're going to have to find a way to get audio. Um, no, go ahead. I'm, I can hear you. Good morning, Abdul Hakim. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Abdul Hakim. Good morning, Abdul Hakim. Uh, in studio here, could you check if the audio is fine, please? I can hear you clearly. Um, we, we'll, we'll soon sort it out so that we shall also hear in studio. Uh, that's very, very quick. Quickly, please. Quickly, 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 quickly. I'm so sorry about that. Um, I, I understand that Abdul Hakim actually is responding, but it's a small uh, little bug uh, in studio here. Because if we go this way, 
Okay, they say to me, they give me the thumbs up. Uh, good morning, Abdul Hakim. <laughs> ah good morning, sir. How thank, are you? Thank you very, very much for joining us. Um, I'm well, thank you. Um, uh, you've, been, Excellent. you've been listening to our program so far. Um, with you know yes, your uh, colleague Favor. Um, good morning, Favor. Good yeah. morning. Okay. <laughs> now I, I wanted to pick up with you something she spoke about. Um, uh, that is capacity building among the youth as being key. The youth are those that are most you know usually associated with um, um, computerdom and cyber, the cyber world. Even though it is alleged that they don't always. Um, make the, 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 the most, um, shall we say, um, productive and innocent use of it. So I wanted to bring that to that question to you, the development of, um, uh, you know, capacity among our youth. And related, please, to uh, this new concept to most of us, cognitive intelligence, uh, a.k.a. artificial intelligence. Okay. Uh, first of all, let me just uh, express some gratitude and appreciation. Uh, of course, we start always with the Almighty, um, particularly to the committee members and the secretariats in the Office of the National Security Advisor, and uh, certainly the leadership of the National Security Advisor himself. And uh, of course, uh, you know, we thank Mr. President for this uh, opportunity. Moving to your question, uh, first and foremost, let us understand that we, we envisage a whole of society approach. So when it comes to capacity building, it's not just about youth. It's about Mala Meshai. It's about Mama Alakara. It's about Mama Okpa. It's about the roadside vendor. Because all of these people are also using these digital tools. They all, they all carry phones in some way, shape, or the other. And therefore, they must be able to understand not only to some level how to protect themselves, but as importantly, their responsibility to stay safe, to practice what we call basic cyber hygiene, and also to get people to appreciate that your data, your information, is actually has an intrinsic value. Today, the real value is not necessarily commodities, as important as they are, but the real value now is being embedded in data, in information, in knowledge. So when it comes to uh, some of these segments, for example, our youth, our technocrats, our ultra-high level decision makers, as well as the people at other levels of society, certainly we have to find ways to take everybody one step forward. Mm -hmm. And that is what this uh, policy uh, articulates. Uh, fundamentally, it's not just about awareness, but you also have teaching and learning and research and development. And research and development is not simply about developing technology, but also developing new ways of learning. But you have to be safe in that learning, and you have to be sure that what you are learning is the correct thing. Yes. Yes. And uh, as Favor very correctly said, there is that institutional mechanism of the NCCC. And as she mentioned, the key word in the NCCC is coordination. So the entity, the institutional mechanism is there to enhance talking or communication, not just between government agencies, but other stakeholders, mm. again, the private sector, civil society, uh, and, and so on and so forth. OK. Um, because and so I think we should also look at opportunities. Okay, opportunities. You, you know, now that you're speaking like this, um, I, I recall that sometimes you see some of these global names in um, computerdom coming down to Nigeria. I, I think, uh, if I recall in the news, uh, the the um, the Facebook CEO, um, he's come around. He's interfaced with people, with youths in Nigeria. I don't know. Microsoft probably has something like that going on. I, I wanted to ask you. Um, uh, what, would, what would your assessment be as to how well we are doing in Nigeria uh, in the African category uh, in terms of our security? Are we, um, are, are we up there? Is there a heck of a lot more to do or are we way down there? 
I would say first and foremost, we're in the top five. Okay. Having said that, security is one of those uh, interesting sectors that always moves. It's very dynamic. Mm -hmm. uh, as soon as you block one avenue, of course, the bad actors find, find other ways. Mm. So you have to keep moving. Just because you are relatively okay at this moment doesn't mean you'll be okay, you know, a, a few months from now. Okay. Um, let, me, let me return to favor in, in studio and take on some other aspects of um, where it could all go wrong in, 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 in cyberspace um, if, if, if we're not careful. Of course, there's always the problem of um, now the bad guys, I don't know what else to call them, um, they've now gone online, now they're out there in, in cyber world, and um, you could lose a lot of money, for example, and that's where I, I interface with you being the group chief information security officer of, an, of a bank, uh, so you, m more than your bank and other banks, uh, are going to ne necessarily pay particular attention to this because you could actually lose a lot of money if things are not right, they say you could even lose your identity. That could be hijacked, those kind of things. Um, so I, I wanted to uh, ask, against the backdrop of what um, Abdul Hakim has said, that we're actually in the top five. Um, how well are we doing in, in, in this regard? Because um, as if you didn't have enough on your plate, government, I understand, has now said that even cyber currency, we ban it for the moment. So uh, just look at all of this going on. So I, I guess you're about the best person to ask um, how this cyber security thing and government not being happy with um, cyber currency. Uh, uh, you mean cryptocurrency? Uh, I beg your pardon, cryptocurrency, yes. Um, Bitcoin cryptocurrency. How all of that works out? Because I'm sure government is all about uh, trying to protect you know, the society. Okay, um, with regards to, um, there's just one thing that I, I think we need to understand here. When people understand how to protect their identity, um, the chair just says something about everybody having internet presence. Many do carry phone, many have accounts also on social media, many tweet and do Instagram and what of you, mm -hmm. but not many really understand the nitty gritty, the security element of those things. And how it works. And how it works. You know, and because of that, if somebody can take your, can get access to your PIN, either your account number, or can gain access to your password, which many don't even understand the basic, you know, if you just have a password, before hacking takes some level of skill. But by level of advancement in technology, advancement in, uh, you know, there are a lot of things that are free. You don't necessarily even have to have a special skill before you can be an hacker. So, which also means that to an average person, an individual on the road, that use some of this technology guarded, it's also necessary for them to know how to pre protect their identity mm -hmm, mm -hmm. with at least the basic thing. So that's where the information thing so, comes about. And the thing is that when your information is not, there has to be a boundary as in what you make available to the public and when it is actually private to you. Mm -hmm. But when there is no boundary between those two, you see people actually just let loose, you know, and uh, just any information about their life is on the public domain. Indeed. And be because of that, it's easier for somebody to do some form of information gathering on them mm -hmm. and to use it and find a way, you know, on their pattern, their way, their way they browse, where they visit, and to also do, you know, quite a number of things. But I know that as uh, with this new policy uh, that have just been uh, released, and uh, with all the stakeholders working together, this is going to, you know, as one of the aims to curb crime, to also create awareness, to let people understand where they come in and how they cannot afford to be the weakest link that break the chain. Okay. Um, t turning back to you, um, Abdul Hakim, um, it's been quite informative what we've just uh, uh, heard. And um, just about everybody knows, we talked about how it's become ubiquitous now. Everybody is carrying a phone. Um, however, uh, the dangers of that phone if one is not knowledgeable and that's why I'm particularly chuffed that you said information is going to be a part of this um, 
just for being there, if the owner of a device doesn't really know how to set the parameters, you could just be a walking beacon, I understand. Um, you could just be a walking sure. beacon. Uh, people could actually access your, your phone. And um, Favor here is talking about the need to not be the weakest link. Um, this, this has made our lives much more complicated. On the, one, on the one hand, it's made it easier. I can communicate with anybody around the world now without even paying a cover. But on the other hand, um, it, it's also, you know, it, it opens me off, it, up if I don't know um, what, what I'm doing. How, how, how is this balanced? I, I, I hear about VPNs. Uh, the, the, maybe you'll talk about that as well. Well, I, let's, I, I don't think we need to go that technical. Mm. Uh, what is critical is that, uh, first of all, the average user, we need to step up their awareness and their insight into what to do, first and foremost, to protect themselves. As a society, we need to encourage some of our younger people to develop the tools that are easily used indigenously. That is, develop certain tools and apps for us, by us, so that some of these, you know, your roadside vendor would find it easy to use, in, including in uh, local languages. Bearing in mind, sir, that there are headaches, no doubt, but the challenge is, can we also develop the analgesic? Can we make money from these headaches? So let me give you an example. Between 2023 and 2025, the African cybersecurity market, that is solutions market, is estimated to be at, going to be at $4.5 billion US. So the question we should ask ourselves as a society, how many jobs can we leverage to create from that uh, market? What kind of wealth can we generate? And as a byproduct, what's taxes can government also garner from that okay so that we have to be able to take some of these headaches some of these challenges and convert them into solutions which requires that awareness uh, training and teaching and learning research and development we must invest in ourselves and that is why it's a whole of society approach it's not simply about the NSA, the Ministry of Education. Um, as you know, most of the infrastructure is owned by the private sector. So it really requires a, whole, you know, a host of other issues. When we talk about the opportunities, let's look at our girl child. Now, there are many of our young ladies who grow up in very conservative environments where maybe they're not really allowed to freely go up and down, uh, round and about. If you have one of them get into the profession of cybersecurity, they can work from home. So these are the things that we've tried to capture in the policy so that we can push that Nigeria agenda. Mm -hmm. So that not only do we have some leadership in Africa, but certainly we need uh, global leadership from us. Okay. And we have the capacity to do it because we have the intellect. Mm -hmm. All right then. Um, uh, Faber, he, you, you said it's very important to, to know how to put a barrier between your private information and uh, public information. Now, I, I, I was wondering, um, yeah, as um, Abdul Hakim said, uh, we don't need to go too technical. Mm. But virtual private networks, what they do is they hide they the, the hide yes. where you are. Yes. The, so that, that is immediately one problem in anybody who is trying to, you know, maliciously, malvolently uh, uh, monitor you. But I wanted to return to the era because if it is only the little one that people can do, can grab from you that, in the first instance, you've got to be aware of how to take care of your own cyber security uh, at, at the very smallest unit. What are some of those things where uh, apps are opening themselves up and saying, just put your, your email in this and become a member of this site, and people don't really know? Maybe, is it going to be linked with this whole education thing that people need to be taught, quite frankly, informed as to dangers that by me looking as, um, uh, as goodies? Yes, um, I think uh, if I have to come from that perspective, 
many actually fall a victim of freebies on the internet. Internet gives and introduces a lot of opportunities that can also bring digital economy for the country and for the individual, for businesses. But being able to understand and, and know how to trade, well, I say with caution. As one can learn and gain so much from the internet, so also some can also get himself unnecessarily exposed. Mm. From the basic uh, good computing hygiene, use a password, use a PIN, something that you know, some, something that is known to you, yes, yes. you know, to at least secure our identity. And let it not be an easy password. And let it not be an easy password to guess because that can easily be, you know, brute, uh, brute force under one second if it's so easy to guess. Mm. Then at the same time, is your life a public domain? If it is not, they understand where you put a boundary. What do you want to see on the public domain? What you would really rather keep as private to you? Okay. So, I, and then people also need to, I know individual, there's a lot of uh, education uh, awareness going on, but people need to begin to pay attention. Just like the chair said something a few minutes ago that, you know, people have to hone it. That responsibility of ensuring they learn the basic thing, do the basic thing. Have we been before have, going to the more technical thing? I, at least do the basic. Exactly. Now, have we been exposed um, any more than before with uh, the COVID need for a lot of people to now work from home? Has uh, what 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 impact has this had on your field here, which is cybersecurity? Um, we are now in the era of the new normal. Okay. <laughs> Whereby, uh, and for many companies that did not put that, and that is why this policy also on the national level takes cognizance to resilience. You know, building resilience, especially on the in, on the critical uh, uh, national uh, uh, information and, uh, and infrastructure, the CNI high. Then also ensuring that uh, the people understand what they need to, how to protect themselves. For instance, uh, I mean, for someone that wants to protect himself, or they need to know what they and what they're supposed to do. Resilience also means that you want to ensure that in case anything happens, people are working from home, no doubt. But then, how do you have an understanding of what they are using to work from home from? I know various companies that from last year, their employees have been working from home and they're doing well. While some other segments, there's the need for them to come to the office. But then, the most important thing is, can you measure what they're doing from home? Are you sure of the what they're using to connect for your system? So, which also means that every organization also have to factor in mm. that there is, I mean, the area of somebody being physically in the office, mm. perhaps has, is, has gone. Mm. And mm. Uh, for where, wherever you are, for some, for some particular you know, roles or job function, they can actually work from the confine of their house and still do a good job. Which, which, which goes back to what uh, Abdul Hakim said uh, uh, about um, indigenous softwares, because um, in other parts of Africa, I, I believe in, in, in Kenya and maybe South Africa, farmers, agriculture is very big. Uh, that is, they found a way with apps and for farmers, young farmers especially, um, to, to sort of take advantage of, 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 of the whole cyber thing. Um, that, it, it just occurred to me that what the new normal is doing with offices, some people have actually, from before now, uh, been working like that. They, they didn't go to, their office was their farm. And yet they were linked, you know, some way or the other um, to computer, to, to, where is up there, the clouds? Yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know that we have that, even though I know that we are no slackers. Mm -hmm. I know that there are youths and um, from, from time to time we hear glowing things about our youth, but just because that whole matter about the new normal that you spoke about uh, came up, any, 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 any knowledge of what our youths are doing, farmers, uh, ordinary people? Yeah, a lot of things are going on in that space, I can assure you. I mean, at least I'm, I'm privy to know of some projects that is basically targeted towards agro-business, you know, agri, you know, working with farmers, you know, just to ensure that, uh, you know, working with farmers to ensure that uh, they, they understand how to use technology to make life easier for them and also to, you know, be able to, 
So many things now with the here with you know, with predictive analysis, analysis mm. with uh, artificial intelligence, data analytics, mm -hmm. and machine learning, and all mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. learning the behavior of how uh, their crops and also how their cows or whatever is doing, all these things is 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 going to be run, you know, with artificial intelligence, and a lot of projects capturing that, even uh, disbursement of funds to farmers and all that mm -hmm. is already being computerized. It's also, also being leveraged on technology and how to do. And I think we are already in, the, in, the, in a good direction. Okay. You know, let, let me, just let, working together to ensure that we get to where we desire to be as a nation. Okay. And, and, and Hakim, uh, Abdul Hakim, the resilience yes. that I, you, you've spoken about in the past and that Favor is speaking about now, um, it, it's probably more important than ever, isn't it? This whole resilience of the structure to abuse. In fact, I would escalate it beyond resilience to survivability. Okay. The, the way the world is, we, we must be digital to survive, but in order to be digital, we must be safe and we must engender trust because if you don't have trust in the technology because it is safe nobody will use it if i may just uh, buttress uh, what you've said about issues of confidentiality and free things on on on, on the net or in cyberspace there is an adage that if something is free be careful you are the customer I mean, you are, you are the product, not the customer. So if something is free, you are the product, not the customer. Okay, okay. In addition, uh, we also have to understand that we need to be extremely proactive as a society. Uh, there's another famous adage that cyber criminals operate at the speed of light. <laughs> but law enforcement operates at the speed of law. Mm -hmm. And when you have that natural mismatch, you have to be a bit more proactive if you are part of the, the good actors, because the bad actors are moving quickly. Yeah, indeed. Uh, well, I, I, I thank you very much. You just went and opened up another area. I wish we could get into it, but we've run out of time on this particular uh, uh, subject. Can I put a plug for where you can get this? Uh, go ahead, please. If you want to download it, uh, you go to HTTPS. Uh, colon double forward slash c e r t dot gov dot n g. It's the uh, NSA, the Computer Emergency Response Team's web page. Please go there. You can download a copy free of charge. It's free. It's for free yours. of charge. Thank you very much. Free. FOC. <laughs> 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 and that, that's one freebie you can trust. <laughs> exactly. That's one freebie you can yes. trust. <laughs> Thank you very much, very Abdul Hakim Ajilola, you know, chair of the National Cyber Security Policy. It's an honor and a pleasure. Thank you. And a, 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 a strategy uh, of which um, favor Femi Oyewale also, uh, General Chief Information Security Officer of Access Bank. Um, was a part. It's, it's done now. That, yeah, it's uh, that assignment is completed now. Yes. Now we have to work it. Thank you very much as well Thank you. Uh, for your work and also for making time to come in here and talk to us about it. Thank you very much. Our pleasure. Okay, stay with us please. We'll take a break. Uh, we'll be right back. At TVC News, wherever the big news story is happening, we're geared up to break it. TVC News, first with breaking news. Every major news story is with many perspectives and layered with different levels of impact. Hello. What time did this happen? We will be right there. At TVC News, we follow the big and major news, gathering the facts, witnessing the outcome. I am here live for the aftermath of the approval of the new national minimum wage. We are TV station of the year, not just for breaking news, but for being first, fair and accurate. TVC News, first with breaking news. The TVC News at 7 and the TVC News at 10 are not like any other news broadcast. It's the big news hour, the hour for the big breaking stories. We've got some of the best reporters on the field. Taking you through as it happens. It's fast-paced, hard-hitting. With investigations that matter. Bringing in news that affects your life. With sport, entertainment and business news so you don't miss a thing. Experience resourceful, calm.
coverage was death. Ever not. Join me, Precious Amayo, as I bring you news from the epicenter, where it happens and when it happens. Staying on top of every breaking story, minute by minute, right at the hour when the city gets busy and just before it slips. We're live from every angle, with objective insight and analysis. TVC News, first breaking news. At TVC News, wherever the big news story is happening, we're geared up to break it. TVC News, first with breaking news. Okay, welcome back. And um, let's talk the other aspect, um, security, because corruption, you know, the war against corruption is a form of it. And um, I guess this time is uh, Alani Wajus Raj, he's chair of civil society uh, network against corruption. Thank you very much for coming on. My pleasure. Now, the big news, the big news is in your sector, in, in our sector, <laughs> our <laughs> sector, everybody's sector, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, after a long term without a substantive head, uh, multiple attempts by Mr. President mm -hmm. and uh, multiple rejections by the National Assembly. Precisely. And now the first time mm. that he submitted the new chair, mm -hmm. the 40-year-old um, Mr. Bawa, you know, he, he's been accepted. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what, 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 what do you think? Is, is that exciting? Yes, it is, really. Um, that finally we can have uh, a substantially legally supported and um, appointed chairman of the commission. Uh, mm. Like you said, uh, the rejections were mm -hmm. really uh, setbacks for the um, agency itself uh, and the same thing for the fight against corruption uh, by the National Assembly. That was the previous one. The unfortunate thing was also the failure of the uh, current government to resubmit the name uh, for this um, new uh, assembly, the okay. 8th assembly, since <coughs> okay. they came into power in To see what they would think exactly, of the nominee. Yeah. But finally having a new one uh, in terms of the Abu Rashid Bawa uh, is uh, exciting, uh, but actually not totally uh, in the sense that um, there's a whole lot that needs to go for that uh, office uh, in terms of the independence the security and the motivation for the occupants of that office. And that is what is most crucial at this stage. Uh, the beauty of this uh, with uh, Bawa is the fact that it's been confirmed by the Senate mm -hmm. for uh, his four-year uh, term in office. So it would be um, difficult, not impossible, but would be difficult for the level of interference to be experienced as was with the case of uh, Ibrahim Magu. Okay. Uh, I, I, so at this stage, it, it is I your feeling that, that there was some measure of interference no, in the work I'm, of the I'm commission. Aware there are because there is a lot of interference with that process. Even though they themselves never met, never never admitted it, it, it was yeah, the politically it, it correct was, thing to do. It was ominous. It, it was not just obvious. It was just an ominous one that put no good intention. Uh, for even uh, experience or record for the mantra, the commitment, the agenda of this government. Uh, and uh, my organization just submitted a letter to the president giving about 20 cases, you know, of where the government actually faltered in terms of standing for uh, the fight against corruption. And this is not just about the government. This was also more of the failure, uh, deliberate in some times, and conscious one in other times, uh, and also incompetence in some other, of the Office of the Attorney General of the Federation. Uh, and this really affected uh, not only the achievement of the EFCC, uh, it also provides that level of insecurity for the office of the chairman. Mm. So, which is where it's very crucial that everybody, the media and the civil society, will have a responsibility to protect that office and the occupant of the office from the undue interference uh, of the office of the attorney general, most especially uh, if there's going to be any success with the anti-corruption fight. The, the second point forward. is also the National Assembly would need to review the EFCC Act to bring it in also um, compliance with the international standard. And that is what we even have with the ICPC Act. 
the president or the any minister cannot remove the occupant of the office of the ICPC as a chairman, hmm. except with the express approval of the two-third majority of the Senate. And that should be the same thing uh, with the EFCC chairman. Uh, we, without um, the exhaustion of the mandated office as conferred by the National Assembly, it should not be susceptible uh, to the influence or interference either in terms of operation or even security of tenure. Uh, of both the president or even uh, the minister. Uh, our laws would have to be amended to achieve this. It's very important. You know, it's important. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the constitution would have to be amended. The a bit. EFCC Act. Is the EFCC Act. Uh, exactly. That, mm -hmm. that actually established that office. Uh, and in terms of the operation, the agencies should be able to operate freely. Look at what is happening with Code of Conduct Bureau. We're not happy with that. The Code of Conduct Bureau is so much tied uh, to, in terms of operation, uh, and that is why prosecution is not going on. You possibly would only have about years um, code of conduct bureau when there's high profile political person that is connected. Outside that, you don't hear anything again. So ICPC is bringing itself back uh, to reality. But we can't afford to then allow EFCC to then start going down. So it is very good that we have now part of the succession generation plan is to have the cadet officers uh, like Bauer take over from the police officers mm -hmm. uh, in the management, administration, and operation of, of the EFCC. Okay. And that is coming to fruition now. The bit of it that the government must then take uh, as a very good opportunity to reposition the police is that those that are mm -hmm. deployed from EFCC should not just be subsumed in what is perceived as the corruption in the police force. They should be then taken back to specific departments, the special fraud unit and the rest of that, to go and reposition those units in the police Indeed. as well, I, I so that the police can, can also be well positioned for... Thank you for holding on, Mr. Yakub. Go ahead with your question now. Thank you very much, Enjoy. And then good morning to your guest, quickly. I good think uh, I align with your guest, and then I said it all. If our constitution does not admit it, I don't think EFCC is going to achieve much. Why? Because a situation where the EFCC is prosecuting a, a case, and then along the line, the Attorney General of the Federation, uh, 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 Minister of the Justice, will need to call that uh, file the case file, and then the case will stop. So, if you are the thing I want to ask your guest this morning is this. I don't know, maybe you people know. I don't know. I'm a novice. Hmm. The case of uh, uh, Ibrahim Magu, that uh, and so, uh, the former justice of this uh, country, uh, in person of uh, Ayos, uh, Justice Ayos Salam, headed that uh, panel. What is the outcome of that issue? Nigeria does not know it because come tomorrow, what happened to Magu the next year? What happened to this, uh, this, this government uh, chairman now? Okay, Mr. Yakub. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. We got your drift. Indeed. Thank mm. you very mm. much. Mm. Well, you, 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 you got him. <laughs> yeah. um, how, yeah. how, how can anybody be sure that what happened to Magu, mm -hmm. whatever it is that they conceive happened to him, mm -hmm. does not happen to... Yeah, uh, I mean, I made that point um, while I was speaking. Mm -hmm. it, it is not just the government. The, the political elite would not protect. I mean, because they're going to be victim of a very virile, independent, active, uh, and also effective EFCC leader. So they're not going to protect. It is the citizens, the media, and the civil society that protects that office. And it's very correct. What has been obvious is that the only agenda of both Salami panel and the so-called um, concocted petition of the Attorney General was basically just to remove Magu from office. It is not about the interest of the EFCC because there's been no reform. Nothing absolutely has happened. You, you know, it's a very difficult, it's a complicated, complicated question because I, I mentioned that the president kept on resubmitting his name. Yeah, I mean, so, so yeah, you know, from that point of view, and the National Assembly kept on rejecting absolutely. that nomination. Twice. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and so uh, finally, we found this. Yeah, then we came to this. Uh, so it was just a conspiracy of the elite, and most of those that are affected by the fight against corruption. And it is not impossible that this will be attempted if Bauer, who I know, would likely want to be a man of himself, would want to also show that it is possible for young people to do it. Okay. And he has that sh heavy load on mm -hmm. his shoulder to also not In be fact, he's, 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 uh, he's already been talking tough. Uh, you know, he intends to do very, very well I'm, at his I'm, job. I'm, I'm impressed uh, with Mazio that. Mazio Korafo, good morning, sir. Thank you mm -hmm. for, holding, for holding on. 
morning, Sayori. Good morning, our guest in the studio. Mm. Good morning. Sayori, our guest, you see. The coming of uh, Mr. Bauer, Abrasi, he is coming at the time that Nigeria is facing serious insecurity. What I want Bauer to do right now is that if he's listening, or anybody can tell him, that you try and see what he can do by tracking down the sponsors of these terrorists, these mm. government kidnappers, made them. Mm. If he can do that, he has achieved, in short, we write his name as a saint. Mm. Okay. Like, because you have seen the major problem as well, because what mm. government supposed the Nigerian government, the Nigerian government cannot employ everybody. What they're supposed to do is to make the environment conducive for people, provide security, provide water, provide electricity, and provide good roads, and make things work sequentially. Mm. But if you take away by all these five factors are being challenged, you can if you continue having a lot of resources on the field. I see what the video said last night, you yesterday, for instance, that over 60 something percent of Nigerians. That are employed, the graduates, so some of them, that they are unemployed, and those of them that are few that are employed, that they collect less than 20 to 30,000 that are a most, a graduate in Nigeria. You see, now you have a child or two there, you send them to school, when they graduate, some of them are different. You see what it's supposed to be in the country like ours. Okay. So that is to say, power is coming at the time that we have to sit down and do at least. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mazi. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, maybe in closing, um, mm -hmm. uh, Larry, how much stock do you place on uh, Abdul Rashid uh, Ba mm -hmm. being a foundation member? As mm -hmm. it's, he started his whole working career mm -hmm. in the EFCC. Mm -hmm. I think under the tutelage of um, uh, uh, Nuh 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 and yes. even Magu himself, he yes. was touted as uh, one of the Magu uh, boys as well. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, so that's, how yeah. much stock do you place on that? Yeah, that I, he's seen I, it all. Just like you said, I mean, they, he's just authored some very good, uh, profound statements. The operational procedure, mm -hmm. standard mm -hmm. operational mm -hmm. procedure for the commission. Mm. Because he's, he's gone through the ladder and also staying, and he knows like you works. see with the headline um, in, in uh, one of the dailies where he had said unexplained wealth would also be proved. These are the provide, and that goes to the issue of the terrorist financing mm. uh, that the mm. last caller just mm. said. Mm. Because most of the beneficiaries of ransoms and kidnapping, they build many of these properties around and exactly. asset, both official exactly. and unofficial, both private and even public mm. servants. So you know, where the, people that would be a revolutionary one. It that indeed. unexplained wealth will be investigated. Indeed, uh, indeed. because we, we, we've come to make an art. We, we, we've out we, of it. Uh, both uh, the out cyber out criminals, exactly. both the public office holders, Pe both even bankers and the rest of them. It, it, it is it, such it, a challenge. It was not that done locally that yeah. people begin to investigate. Mm -hmm. How can? Yeah. No, no problem, just explain. Uh, and it is in the EFCC Act. It, yes. is, it is not anything that it needs to import from anywhere. No law needs to be amended. <laughs> EFCC can invite you yes. on the strength of any of your assets if it is suspected to be outside your legitimate earnings, to come and simply explain. Uh, that part of the this law was not very much used. So it needs to be activated. It, so well, if this uh, is the only thing Bawa is activating, yeah. then Nigeria will have every reason to <laughs> celebrate uh, and look forward to uh, corruption uh, being stemmed in the, in, in, in the board. Okay, so mm -hmm. um, keeping our fingers crossed, and um, you seem optimistic that he's a man of competence. Oh, yeah. He's a man who knows the lie of the ground. Precisely. And um, he himself has been giving us indications of what he's going to be. Uh, uh, I guess, no, not disappointed. I guess he knows, he knows that <laughs> all Nigerians are going to be watching him. Yes. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. We need to watch the organization. No, we, must, we must be watching mm -hmm. the We must be watching him. And we must be watching all those that are around him. Otherwise, all this excitement, motivation will just be extinguished which, which by do. these the hawks that are Indeed. always locking around political office which nobody and wants it is not limited to opposition it is also about even the ruling party <laughs> it's even about those who are his appointors and even some of them in the national assembly who would think oh we confirmed you so you need to return some favor so we need to also keep a very vigilant eye on the stakeholders around uh, the fight against corruption and also the EFCC itself. Thank you very much, uh, Alani Wajusuraj, Chair of Civil Society right. Network Against Corruption. No. Our pleasure. Okay, so that's our program today. Um, please join us tomorrow for a fresh edition. Um, as I always try to say, washing your hands, keeping the distance. Uh, what else? There, there's some other ones. And wearing your mask. There you go. You don't even have a choice about that one. <laughs> you must wear the mask. So I'm um, Yorifola. i see you tomorrow, God willing. Bye-bye for now.
At TVC News, wherever the big news story is happening, we're geared up to break it. TVC News, first with breaking news.